Okay, guys, we're going to start with our next talk. It's going to be about how to build uh, an infrastructure for uh, Visual Effects Studio using open source software. And the talk is going to be given by a member of the Kika Hackerspace in Skopje, the guy who is also the head of IT of a VFX uh, centered company called uh, FX3X in Skopje. Guys, please give your warm applause for Zlatko Trajcevski. Thank you, thank you. Uh, everything is okay, you hear me? Okay, uh, actually this is my second talk in uh, OpenFest. I did, I did one short talk in 2005. It was about the state of the free software in Skopje in Macedonia because I come from there. And yeah, this is a little bit longer talk. And uh, yeah, I intentionally changed my title on the slide. It's more about server, server infra infra infrastructure than the visual effects uh, uh, software. And we are, I work in this visual effects company and we are the guys that do the common line and uh, opposite to the others where they work with the tablets, with the mouse and doing everything visual, we do everything with the keyboard. So it's more going to be how do we manage, how do we work in this space, how. Uh, okay, I said myself, I got an introduction. Uh, maybe I will skip this slide. Yeah, I use Linux and open source, I don't know, 20 maybe years. So I'm a big fan and supporter of this uh, thing. And uh, let's give a short introduction about what is, vi what is visual effects. Uh, people think that is like visual effects is, I know, one, one thing, warp, one program that does all the magic. But actually it's a, a lot of programs, a lot of departments, a lot of people working together to get these visual effects on the screen. I mentioned, I don't know, here are seven, eight uh, departments in my company. There are even more. This is just the main ones. And they really work together to get this picture, to get this uh, on the end. So actually, uh, the visual effects author gets something like on the left side of this screen, something with a green screen. Uh, now in Hollywood, they record everything with a green screen in the back background and then just put something else. Uh, then you get this picture on the right. You put it, you put, I don't know, plenty of the pictures, you put many of the effects, and we see them in this, in the cinemas. So how do we manage, how do we, how do they do this from the server architecture side? And this is actually, I wanted to show you how the screen of one animator looks like. I don't know if you, somebody of you works with this, but yeah, this is something that I look every day and my screen doesn't look like this my screen is like terminal and uh, yeah what are the needs of the visual effects studio okay let's do it a uh, short introduction now because in one second you have 24 frames and usually we use 2k frames and they're like 14.7 megabytes there are 4k frames they're like uh, I don't know three or four times bigger. These numbers are not uh, exact, they can var vary. And 2K frames are more common. And uh, you know, when they, these movies came with 4K, we just got massive upgrade of our network server infrastructure and everything because we needed more power. And one artist on average loads 100 frames. This is some average, very bad average, but let's have, we have to do it. Uh, 100 frames and he reloads them 15 times at least in one day. So one artist works with, this is some 22 gigabytes, let's say, uh, of data every day. Render nodes load one 2K frame every four seconds in average. Um, what they render, they actually load like in two seconds, but let's say they don't render all the time, the render nodes. Actually, if my colleagues hear me this, they will say, no, no, they're not, they're rendering all the time. But, but okay, let's say they have a pause. So it's four seconds in average. So with these numbers, 
uh, during one work day, eight hours, we have only read. If we use 2K frames, we have constant read of 259.75 megabits per second from file server. So this is for 100 workstations and 50 render nodes. We have more in our company. But let's say if we have 100 workstations and 50 render nodes, these are the numbers. And you can see that actually two-thirds of this is from the render nodes. Uh, they get uh, a lot of data. And also there are peaks. This is like constant. This is some statistic. It's not like, uh, let's say, artists come at work in the morning and, they, and then you have a peak from the server. They read everything from the server. And uh, something else is, yeah, new scene is, rent is given to the render nodes. Then the they get, they go to the file server and they get the, the, the data. And also writing slows down file servers. When somebody is writing, it's really, the file servers are slowing down. We are, yeah, we are trying not to have this, but yeah, it, it's happening. And this is, these numbers are only for 2K. If we need 4K, then we have, we go, uh, multi, you multiply this number with three or four, and this is a lot of data that we have to serve to the artists. So they get this on the screen and they do the effects. So my talk is going to be more about how to get this data, how to serve these artists. Okay, this is very sim one simplification. On the left we have servers and on the end, on the right side we have workstations and render nodes. The aim is to have the workstations and render nodes, one gigabit, one gigabit ethernet, one gigabit ethernet uh, speed, all the time. So whatever they do, they have one gigabit Ethernet, reading and writing and everything. So that's the aim on the end. So with the net network infrastructure, it's pretty simple. We have 40 gigabytes on the left that our servers are connected, and we have 10 gigabits network, and uh, they go to one gigabit, and they go to the workstations and render nodes. Uh, let's go first for the file servers. We're going to go slowly from the file servers to the clients. And yeah, we build our own file servers with high IOMs. This is one thing that these file servers need is very high IOPS. And uh, yeah, we build our own file servers. We had a lot of companies coming to us. They're giving our offers. They were mostly for banks, for insurance companies, servers. They are totally different than the hours, the our needs. So we get out of the shelf components. We really get them. Sometimes we or yeah, we ordered them mostly from the United States. And sometimes we pray if they work together because you know we never know what what problems may arise. Until now we didn't have problems, but yeah, we were and uh, we get this sh of the shelf components, we put them together, and uh, we use Linux. We use CentOS to power these file servers. And we use also Software 8, because we tried with Hardware 8 and everything, and it's much, much better. Uh, I cannot, if somebody wants to talk about these things later, because I don't have time for, for these things in this presentation. But yeah, Software 8. And uh, we use a lot of a lot of server and client caching to get this data to the to the artist. Without this caching, our file servers will be almost dead. So we use RAM is the primary caching. We have a lot of RAM. In the then we have SSD caching. It's used for read and write. RAM is only for read. And then we use NFS cache. NFS cache is something that you use that we use to cache the files on the clients. So if they read once from the file server, uh, they are cached locally. And when they, uh, when they reread them, try to reread them, it will find, aha, these files were once read. And we are going to be, uh, it's, not, it's not going to reread them again if the files didn't change. This is NFS cache. And it helped us a lot, really. When you, when you put NFS caching on the clients, the load of the servers went down. It was like two years ago. And why do we build our own file servers? Because we understand our problem. And yeah, really, 
uh, companies, like I said, that came to us didn't understand our problem. And there are not much visual effects companies in, let's say, in this area, in Skopje and Macedonia, maybe. Uh, let's talk about something about the file server solutions. In the past, it was uh, ZFS we were using with Open Solaris, but then Open Solaris just uh, went, it wasn't free anymore and blah, blah, blah. ZFS was, is not that good. Doesn't provide the same speed on FreeBSD or Linux on everything. And we were using primarily ZFS because of SSD caching. But now we change because of this closed nature of open Solaris, of Solaris actually. We, are, we changed to XFS file system that's all from Silicon Graphic Interface, and we use LVM cache. We have some problems with LVM cache, but it's, I cannot, we can discuss later if somebody is interesting, interested. And uh, in the future, we have a couple of servers that use ButterFS or BetterFS, and for our need, for our load, it, it really gives a very good uh, uh, performance, but uh, it's not stable. But our, for our news, these things are stable, but we have a couple of servers that are using it, and uh, maybe we'll go, uh, we'll put it in more and more, but we'll have to see it. And on the end, I'm seeing some future, but I don't know, for years I'm thinking about this, to use GlusterFS. GlusterFS is distributed file system where you have multiple file servers that act as one. So you, you, uh, and uh, still we are not there, still has a problems. We are testing it, but let's say in some future, I hope we will switch to it. Okay, it, it's a brief introduction from the server side. Let's go to the client side. Let's see the problems on the client side. It's not only the artists. We have, yeah, more than 10 departments, like I said. They all have different needs. They, they do every something else. Some department need more CPU. Some department needs GPU. Yeah, Maya 3D, they need GPU. CPU, I don't know, for rendering for some department. Some department needs RAM. They want to load more frames in the RAM so they can work with more frames. I don't know, painters and rotoscopy. So they have all of them different needs. All with different client programs and different setup. They all work with different programs. Like I said, we don't have one magic program that you just go to it and make these visual effects. Every department has its own different setup. And um, also, render nodes are there. Render nodes should render everything from all the departments. So they, will have, they should have all the programs, CPU, GPU power, RAM, and everything. So it's a little messy situation. Let's see how do we solve this situation. Yeah, we simplify. Uh, we try to simplify a lot, and then, uh, yeah. We have one file system image for all workstations and render nodes. So every workstation, doesn't matter with which department or if it's render node, it has one image. It works in one image. Why? With this, we have the same programs everywhere, the same versions. So the artist can switch their workspace very easily. I work here, I can continue there. Because their work is sometimes in team. They need to do this job, so they switch. Sometimes their computer breaks. Sometimes their computer breaks. So they can just go to the next computer and finish the job, not waiting for us to fix their computer. Also, for us, it's really easy. We reset the, if some problem has with the, is coming with the workstation or with the render node, we can fix and return the image in five minutes. We just go and click return the image and the, the workstation will be up and running if it was some software problem, I don't know. And yeah, what do we use for this? We use System Rescue CD with PXE Network Boot. So with System Rescue CD, we just boot the machine and then we use FS Archiver, Archiver for file system images. We just create these file system images and we, we have a lot of scripts for automatization. So when you have this system rescue CD boot up, you say, yes, I want 
this image to be re to be returned to this workstation, and it will automatically do everything: partitioning, returning of the image. So in five minutes, you have a one with a empty hard drive. You have a running workstation. Yeah, simplify one image. But you know, like I said, some departments have different needs. So what do we use for everything else? We have Ansible. Yeah, Ansible. Uh, it's really helpful to us. So, yeah, on boot, the workstation says, aha, now I'm, I don't know, I need this setup. So it, it starts Ansible and some bash scripts, and it does some reconfiguration. Why do we need this? Uh, yeah, we need it, uh, yeah, Ansible and bash. And why do we use Ansible? Because it's really good, it's really readable because you can just see it's like a document of what's going on on the on the workstations yeah like i said simple examples like if the machine is booting up and it says aha i am a render node it will not start the graphical user interface but it will start uh rendering interface let's say or also we do this with ansible for upgrading for of some program so when the machine boots, you get the new version of, let's say, Maya 3D program. So uh, also we use Git. We put all of these Ansible things in Git. Uh, probably, yeah, you know what is Git. It's more tool that programmers use it, but also system engineers and system admins. Yeah, we have it for the rescue. So what does it need? It gives us very good interface for tracking our changes. So also for testing our changes, and we can revert. If we have a problem, we can revert uh, some change that we made. Uh, yeah, and we know what has been done when. What were you? I don't know. Something happened two weeks ago. Oh, hey, we can see what had we changed at that time with Git. It's very easy for us. Uh, yeah, we can always revert the changes. If something bad happened, let's just revert this change. It's a really helpful tool for us. Um, okay, we also work smart, like I said. What does it mean? Uh, this is one example of this working smart. Let's say we have to have a list of all hardware, because we have a lot of workstations and everything. They all sometimes switch the graphic cards. It's very dyna dynamic work. Sometimes you switch memory from here, there, graphic card from here to there, monitors, because the artist needs different workflow and blah, blah. So we need to keep track of this hardware. So instead of doing this manually, we just boot one script that when the computer boots, it just says, aha, I have this hardware. So it reports to one server. And in this one server, you have automatically built a hardware list. So also we are uh, planning, it's not still there, but we are planning to do it with the uh, automatic uh, asset tracking. So I can know where this graphic card has been where in the, it's still not there, this part, but yeah. So we have a list of hardware that's really automatically done for us. And yeah, we build it ourselves. Like I said, we don't want to have, I don't know, third of our work just filling these hardware lists. And yeah, you can see it, everybody can see it through the website. Just uh, artists go to the website and see, aha, uh -huh, who has which kind of configuration. And yes, we are lazy. We, are, we automate. If we didn't do this, we wouldn't be system admins, yeah. And uh, we really want to use the time for progress, not doing the dull, repetitive work. Uh, I don't know. There are many, many small things that you can automate. Uh, we try to see, to seek out which things are repeatable, uh -huh, which problems we get all the time, and try to make them, I don't know, in some way automatic. Uh, we use this. Uh, yeah, we like to find our problems before our users. It's much easier when you go to your users, you have a problem. 
this is not working and we need to change it or something. Hardware problem, it's much better. Uh, the other side is wait for his computer to broke and then uh, get his visit or his ticket when he's angry, my computer is not working. Yeah, we, we use, uh, yeah, we parse logs for this. We have cron scripts that check stuff and we use Zabbix for reporting some of these problems. And yes, like I said, automatically resolve them if it's possible. Maybe one small uh, example will be sometimes the network cards go from one gigabit to 100 megabits per second. It just happens sometimes to the workstations. And we have a cron script that runs every hour and checks this. Uh, because if uh, the network card goes down, the artist really gets 10 times slower machine and he gets angry. So we have this script that automatically checks and just if it sees that it's 100 megabyte, it goes to the one gigabit. So we just get an email, uh -huh, this computer was fixed. <laughs> so, and it's really small, stupid script. It's not about the program, it's about like doing the, doing these things automatically. Uh, yeah. Also, we have some script that check hard drives and blah, blah, the memory and many things of the workstations. Yeah, well, doing this, it's really, it's really important for us to not irritate artists or our users. Because uh, sometimes the sysadmins think that, you know, they are the boss of their, they have the root password and everything they can do, everything to the artist machines. But we try not to do this. We try. Uh, artists are owns. We never. You should never forget that artists are owners of their workstations. You are just managing them. And yes, uh, when you do the change, when you do the change, uh, we have to inform the artists. It's really nice. Aha! Uh -huh, we are going to do some change of your computer. So he's aware of what is going on with, with his computer. And we do this reconfiguration on uh, restart, not while the artist is working. It's very important. We don't want the artist to work, I don't know, with Maya, with some very with program that has a high CPU demands, and you just upgrade uh, his program while he's working. We don't want this. So we do it while it's restarting, the computer or shutting down or, pow or yeah, powering up. And we try with the longer system upgrades to do them only on power off. So some upgrades, we really need to do them, take like 20 minutes and we just do them when the artist goes home at after work, 20 minutes, the computer, when he clicks shut down, the computer will do the upgrade and uh, the artist will be away on a beer for the second beer while his computer is upgrading. So not in the morning when his, his computer starts and waits 20 minutes. And if he has a, some job to do, it's not a good thing. Yeah, don't irritate artists. And yes, we use tickets for reporting problems. What's interesting here when we did this ticketing solution, we said, we said it's going to be the simplest solution ever for us. Just for the artists, we are going to make them just to enter ticket name and description. And that's all we need. And we are going to gather all of other informations automatically about his computers, his hardware state, connected with this hardware uh, thing that we list that I mentioned before, and everything. So, yeah, it's very simple, it's usable. And on the end, when we solve the tickets, we try to put explanatory comments. So what happened to the artist machine and everything? Just the artist had this problem, this problem, it was solved in this way. So on the end, uh, we have our own database of how the problems were solved and also we have uh, happy artists. They know what has happened to their machine. It's not something magic. And yeah, we integrate, maybe this is the best thing for us, we integrated this ticketing system with Jabber, Slack, and email. So, yeah, we get uh, 
when you get a new ticket, we get it on a Slack, on a mobile phone, because we are not always working on a machine. We are something somewhere away, and we can discuss about this ticket and say, oh, I will take this ticket and everything. So it makes this integration very mobile, and this is really what we need. Uh, yeah, even if we are not at work, we can sometimes solve with this, we can get these tickets. Yeah, this is something that we did to commu yeah, communicate with the others. We did some simple dashboard. We are gathering a lot of data from the workstations, from, I don't know, rendering machines, from servers, from uh, key cards, from the, I don't know, from the kitchen who was ordering, how, how many orders were done and everything. And we wanted to make them in the graphs. So we put one website internal that we put all of these informations. Uh, I don't know, boot time of the workstations, uh, number of logins, last tickets, are they resolved or they are not, processing time for the tickets. Yeah, we put diagram how many, how much time do we need for process these tickets. We also put git changes in this, web, in this website. So everything we do, we have our own document like in git, but also we give, give it to this website so everybody in the company can see what we've done. And yes, it's really good for us. We know we can see what's happening in, from the IT side, IT perspective, but also for the others. We are with this transparent. They can see what we are working, what we are doing. Yeah, we also do like this, how many orders were in the kitchen, blah, blah, some maybe interesting stuff. We were discussing about what was most interesting thing to order in the kitchen, to put it in the, this dashboard. Now, what is our attitude toward our work? Because, yeah, system engineering and free software is about exploring, testing, and choosing the best solution. Yeah, because we don't have some solution from some company that think we have to do the thinking, we have to do the research by our by, our, by ourselves. We use everything I said here is done with free software. From the server uh, side, everything is done with free software. And really, we need people to encourage to make this software to work. And really, I think if you encourage people to think about the problems, to talk about the problems and solutions, and to test multiple solutions. And if you encourage them even to implement this solution, they will do it. We are working together and we are encouraging the people just to have this thinking about the problems and from the thinking to go to the implement, uh, implementation of the, the, of the problem. It's really, I want to, I, Free software really needs someone to make it work in your company. And I always like to say that it's like Lego bricks. It's, they're not impressive if we're not put in the right order. If you have a Lego bricks, like put it in the carpet, they're nothing. But if somebody makes something, it's really, that's the beauty of it. I compare this with the free software and the tools provided with the free software. But really, we need somebody to put them in the, in the order. And yeah, on the end of the day, with the artist, we go for a beer. And uh, yeah, we are not afraid of them. We, we like when we go with the beer, we know they don't have a problems uh, with our work and everything. So we, if we have some problems we discuss, it's better with beer. Uh, this is more or less everything I, was, I had prepared for you. Uh, maybe some of you thought it will be more about visual effects programs, but they are mostly closed source. We, we do the work for Hollywood, and, but we try with the server architecture to do it really in an open way with a free software. Thank you. If you have some questions now, you can do them. Or no questions. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, guys, uh, we finished 10 minutes early, and I would like to give you a few announcements. Okay.
на уебсайта на OpenFest, най-най-най-най-най-в дълното, в секцията Други, има линк към страницата Заведения, където можете да видите кои заведения, с каква отстъпка, в рамките на 10 до 15% предлагат отстъпка за всички хора, които са с лентички от мен. Има линкове към Google Maps, към всяко едно от заведенията, мисля, че са около десетина. Има също така списък с заведенията долу и на рецепцията. 